Second order systems are systems such as this mass spring damper system, which yields a second order differential equation using m, b, and x as parameters. We already know that there's, uh, the response is going to be composed of a particular solution and a homogeneous solution. The particular solution resembles whatever the input function is, and this is true for any differential equation, any order. Uh, so this is just like our first order systems, and so we're not going to talk too much about it right now. We consider that problem to be an easy one. The homogeneous solution, however, uh, yields a second order characteristic equation that has two roots, which can be found say using the quadratic formula, and the cases of interest are real distinct roots, real repeated roots, and complex roots, which uh, we will uh, next examine in order. And to get an understanding of how this affects the response is going to require a little bit of thought. Let's examine this example, x double dot plus 3x dot plus 2x, which is going to reveal two real distinct roots. The roots are actually negative 1 and negative 2, which you can find with the quadratic formula. This means that we're going to have a homogeneous solution, which is the sum of two exponentials, e to the negative 1t and e to the negative 2t. We don't know those coefficients. Uh, we also have a particular solution, which in this case is 0, uh, which is quite easy. So the actual general solution is just going to be uh, the same as a homogeneous solution where we're going to need to use the initial conditions to find the coefficients. You already know how to do that, so I'm not going to show you the details. Instead, I'm just going to show you a plot of what the response actually looks like. Uh, it looks like this uh, blue curve here, starting with the initial conditions uh, that were given and then heading towards uh, a steady state of zero. And uh, what's interesting is to also plot the two terms that actually contribute to this. One is e to the negative 1t, where uh, we would actually, if we solve for the amplitude, we'd actually find that it's about it's equal to two, and then the second one is e to the negative two t, uh, which in this case ends up having amplitude negative one. These two things add up together, but what's important to note is that when you have two real distinct roots, one of them is always slower than the other. In this case, it's the e to the negative one t that's slower. And its slowness is what's going to limit the uh, return to the, uh, or the uh, approach to the final value. And so we usually say that the, the slower response uh, is the one that dominates, and the slower of the two time constants is called the dominant time constant. This is what we also call an over-damped uh, case. And when you have over-damped systems, they ooze towards their final value, and you don't have any overshoot or oscillations. This uh, tends to go smoothly towards uh, the final value. Next is the case of two real repeated roots, where x double dot plus 2x dot plus 1x yields two roots, both equal to negative 1. And the homogeneous solution in this case has two terms, a1 e to the negative 1t, and then the second term, a2t times e to the negative 1t. The particular solution, again, is 0. And again, we can use initial conditions to find the coefficients, but let's just take a look at what the response actually looks like. Here's uh, is shown as the blue curve, starting with initial condition 1 and uh, slope 0, and heading towards the final value that we know is going to be 0. This is in going to include an exponential of some amplitude. If we solved for a1, we would find that it looks like this, with an exponential of negative 1t. The other term, the a2t term, is a little bit harder to, uh, to guess what it's going to look like, but when we plot it, it actually looks like this, such that the sum of these two curves yields the blue curve. It's not too important to worry about the uh, two separate exponentials, except to uh, recognize that this shape for what we call the critically damped case of real roots that are repeated uh, looks like this. It is actually the fastest way you can approach the final value without having any overshoot or oscillations. Here's an example of the case of two complex roots, x double dot plus 2x dot plus 17x. This yields roots negative 1 plus or minus j times 4. You've already worked with this in your homework, and you know that you can write this again as uh, two exponentials where you have complex numbers in the exponent. That's actually not the easiest way to work with this. There are actually two other ways. Uh, 
that we can work with this, uh, where one is to think of this as a sine and a cosine, both of period f of frequency four, multiplied by an exponential e to the negative one t, where that comes from the real part of the uh, solution. Or another way to write it is uh, to think of it as uh, an exponential multiplied by just one sinusoid with some unknown phase. The idea being that a sine plus a cosine is just another way of writing a sinusoid, a single sinusoid with a, a phase. We're not going to concern ourselves with actual values for uh, the phase phi or uh, this constant c. Instead, we're just going to think of this sinusoid. This is a sinusoid of some phase, some amplitude, but with known frequency 4, and the period then has to be 2 pi over 4. Uh, another name we give the um, imaginary part of the response is omega d, the damped frequency. This sinusoid uh, gets multiplied by uh, an exponential, and that exponential uh, forms an envelope. And what we mean by that is to say that the sinusoid never gets bigger than 1. So uh, the sinusoid is just fluctuating between plus and minus 1. And therefore, it has to uh, fit inside the exponential. So we just have to squeeze the sinusoid down vertically so that it fits inside uh, our little dashed lines here. And then that shows us what the curve must look like. It has, still has a sinusoid with the same period that we saw before. It also has to start with the initial conditions that were given and somehow fit inside that exponential envelope. This is what we call the underdamped case and you should think of it as a sinusoid squashed inside an exponential envelope. This is a summary of the possible behaviors for second-order systems. One case is overdamped with distinct real roots. The other is critically damped with repeated roots. And then the last is underdamped with complex roots. We said that you can write the homogeneous solution as an exponential multiplied by sine plus a cosine, or you can write it as uh, having a, a single sign uh, with an uh, unknown phase. There are just two ways that are uh, equivalent to write the same thing. T what's worth remembering is that in the overdamped case, you, the slowest time constant of the two time constants is going to dominate, and uh, there's no overshoot in this case. For the critically damped case, the, this is, often resembles the overdamped case somewhat. Uh, but this is the fastest way to achieve or to reach the final value without having any overshoot. And then finally, the uh, underdamped case has overshoot, uh, meaning that these sinusoids uh, are going to cause oscillations uh, on our way to the final value. And you can think of the underdamped case as being a sinusoid squashed inside an exponential envelope.